welcome to Virology Research Services, where we decode science and provide innovative solutions. Today, we focus on a particularly intriguing member of the Picornaviridae family, Enterovirus D68. Let's explore its history, characteristics, and why it's drawing attention from scientists worldwide. Picture this. It's the 1940s, and the world is grappling with polio virus, a notorious pathogen causing the devastating disease polio, paralyzing or even killing over half a million people globally each year, mostly children. This crisis drove virologists to intensely study and grow the virus in labs, crucial for developing vaccines and treatments. Their efforts didn't just advance polio research, they also led to the discovery of the enterovirus genus, which includes enterovirus A, enterovirus B, rhinovirus A, B and C, enterovirus C, or poliovirus, and our focus today, enterovirus D68. First identified in 1962, enterovirus D68 is a bit of an oddity. It shares traits with both poliovirus and rhinovirus, including its genetic structure and respiratory transmission. Common symptoms are mild, like a runny nose and coughing, but it can also lead to more severe respiratory issues than the typical cold-like symptoms associated with rhinovirus. Enterovirus D68 can also lead to acute flaccid myelitis, a condition that weakens muscles dramatically, particularly in children, in a manner similar to the paralysis seen in polio. Recovering from acute flaccid myelitis isn't easy, it's a tough fight against the virus, and many children don't ever fully regain their normal function. In rare cases, some children can become quadriplegic. And with no specific vaccine or treatment available, it poses a real threat, prompting some to wonder if it could become the new polio. Enterovirus D68 spread through respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes, highlighting the critical importance of respiratory etiquette to prevent transmission. Because it shares respiratory symptoms and transmission routes with rhinoviruses, it is not surprising that enterovirus D68 was originally classified as rhinovirus 87, but further genetic analysis revealed it aligns more closely with enteroviruses, leading to its reclassification. Enterovirus D 68 associated acute gastroenteritis has been reported, suggesting that the virus, despite being a respiratory virus, may also be able to infect the gastrointestinal tract like other enteroviruses. Let's zoom in on how enterovirus D68 infiltrates our cells, which is a key piece of the puzzle in understanding this virus. This virus is known to attach itself to the alpha 2 six-linked sialic acid receptor located on the surfaces of cells in the upper respiratory tract. But here's where it gets even more interesting. Enterovirus D68 has other methods of entering our cells, which remain somewhat mysterious. Despite its discovery decades ago, Enterovirus D68 failed to attract much research attention. As a result, until quite recently, we had limited knowledge about this pathogen, from laboratory studies to clinical insights. However, starting in the early 2000s and continuing through to the present day, there has been a surge in reported cases and outbreaks of infections, especially among children. These infections have caused significant morbidity, raising concerns within the medical community. We've taken a close look at Enterovirus D68, but there's always more to learn. We're a team of scientists at a contract research organization that specializes in virus research, including enterovirus D68, and we'd be happy to connect with researchers who might benefit from our services. And if you're into virology and enjoyed this video, follow our channel for more straightforward science content.